Hey, uh, this video is for Keith. He's one of the guys on the Triumph forums. Um, Keith, you've been asking about, you know, been interested in getting started welding. I'm by no means an expert at welding, and uh, I don't need any trolls out there, all kinds of comments. But um, I just figured I'd give you an update on, you know, the stuff that I have and what you might be interested in having. At least, kind of getting interesting, getting interested in in starting. So, this is my little welder. It's a run-of-the-mill 110 volt welder. I got it free from an uncle who didn't use it anymore. Um, Century got bought by Lincoln. Um, you know, basically you're gonna have four sets of voltage, wire feed speeds. Um, let's see here. I went and got the gas. I got a cheap regulator. My uncle had given it to me, otherwise I would have had to buy one for, I don't know, 50 bucks, 25 bucks, depending on what you get. Uh, but you're going to want gas, you're going to want a regulator. Um, these are magnets for holding the material in place. You can get these all over. They come in big and small sizes. It's caught here. There's your weld wire. I got a couple different sizes. I got .023 for um, sheet metal. Uh, this was the original. This is flex core, uh, thirty thousandths, um, and I got some solid core thirty thousandths. Flex core is for like welding outside uh, because um, the gas uh, gets caught in a crosswind and stuff like that. Like for example, I used this to weld a buddy's uh, bracket on his um, truck. Uh, you're going to want a bunch of these magnets hold stuff in place. You're going to want a bunch of various sizes of um, vice grips. These are special, you know, large mouth vice grips. You're going to want two or three or four of them uh, because if you're welding on the edge of sheet metal, you're going to want to hold it together like this all down the edge and you need some big clearances. This is a copper backing pad for uh, it soaks up the heat on the back so you don't burn through. You know, it's like five bucks. Um, clamps for uh, various sizes of clamps for the sheet metal. You're going to want a couple brushes. Uh, one or two of them. This is your big pliers. These are a nice set from Welper, but you can get them for cheaper. Uh, this is for putting the tips on. This is for removing a nozzle. This is for holding, you know, 1200 degree metal. Uh, you know, here's your nozzle. These tips get dirty, so you just unscrew this top tip, you un then you unscrew this. Uh, let's see, what else? I'm going to want a couple grinders. This is a cheapy. That's actually, and here's a nicer Milwaukee. And you got to polish down all the grinders. You know, fifty, seventy-five bucks. I want a couple of these roll lock uh, sanding pads. So these go in your drill. Let's see here. Ah, shit. Hold on here. Anyway, this this screws out. It's got like a big quarter turn. Um, uh, thread in there. Gonna want some body hammers. I got these off of Buddy's dad for like cheap. This is for cutting sheet metal. More clamps. Need lots of clamps. Uh, extra tips. I got these for free from my uncle. But you're gonna want a bunch of them. This is actually a uh, pump for uh, filling up, um, you know, like camping sleeping bags and stuff like that. Some guys cool their wells with compressed air. Uh, I just try not to run my, my compressor in my garage at night because, you know, I got kids and a wife. This does almost as good a job and is way quieter. Uh, these are little butt weld clamps. They hold the material together. Uh, more magnets. 
auto darkening helmet cover, anti spatter spray that keeps your nozzle clean. Um, I bought this bottle uh, for I think like 60 bucks. You're gonna want a set of gloves. Auto darkening helmet is a must. Couple you need a work area. Mine's messy because I was working on this door. You know, you want a like a welding table. Um, some guys have really nice metal ones. Um, what I do is I weld on this. It's wood. It's like medium density fiberboard or actually high density fiberboard, but it it catches on fire. You can see there. Uh, so what I do is I take a piece of sheet metal that I cut to fit, lay it on lay it on top. Uh, hammers and dollies various sizes. You can get a kit of these for like 30 bucks at Harbor Freight. Um, here's more of these wide angle Irwin vice clamps or vice grips. And I'm going to want a bunch of files. Tin snips for sheet metal. This is a shrinking disc. That's for shrinking the metal after you're done. Um, slappers, dollies, more vice grips, face shield is nice, bunch of wire wheels. I don't, I didn't have a compressor, but I use mostly electric tools, but I have a compressor now. Um, I'm going to want cut off wheels to cut the metal. These are awesome if you're going to uh, cut a lot of sheet metal. Um, for cutting sheet metal, it's a must. You, you really need a pair of these. This is from Harbor Freight for 50 bucks, otherwise they're more. Um, let's see, I got Dremels for uh, cutting more delicate stuff. Uh, let's see, here's my gasket. Uh, it's oxyacetylene. I got this for free um, from work. Um, we had a group, one of the divisions, uh, they do a lot of heat exchanger work and they had this left over. Um, we kind of had like a company raffle to get uh, material that had been written off. Uh, it has a lot of uses for you know sheet metal. A lot of welding can be done with it. Um, not just sheet metal, actually. Um, it's good for cutting thick metal. It's a whole different set of skill sets. It's a lot slower. Um, you know, we can talk about that more. I'm doing a lot of my uh, sheet metal work on it because, like I said, it it keeps the. This is a weld. I actually have not. Uh, ground this weld down at all. This is um, you know, as it is from gas welding, um, but it, it warps the metal a lot more and you have to work it back into shape. For example, here's here's ground MIG welds. They look like bird sh metal bird shit on your car and you have to grind them down. Uh, what else can I show you? Oh, um, this is a big welding blanket. Uh, it's fireproof. It keeps the weld spatter and sparks and grinding off your glass. It'll, it'll scratch your glass and your chrome. Um, I built a couple of um, hangers for it so that I can hang those to keep, you know, weld spatter and stuff from potential fire. You're going to want a fire extinguisher. I got one there. And I got one in the trunk of the car. Um, let's see, what else? And lots and lots of random scrap metal you can find all over. I mean, it, it always comes in handy. I got this, I got this, some business was going out of sale. I've used these multiple times. It's just, you know, half-inch plate with some shit welded on. I put this on so I don't kill myself if I fall on it. A whole bunch of scrap metal. And what I did was, you know, I got a welder. Hold on, I'm going to put the camera down. my scrap metal bin and I started on the medium, the medium thick stuff and I just bought this and I cut it into pieces and I welded and I welded and I welded and I read the books and I watched the videos and I you know just did the same thing looking at you know differences between you know if I don't do a V groove if I do do a V groove the voltage settings you can see you know for example here's a 
what looks to be a nice weld, but it's kind of sitting up high. So you know, and then you know, other shittier welds, and then you know, I gradually got better. Then once I kind of mastered that stuff, you know, then I went on to sheet metal. This is actually gas welding. Um, this is just, you know, I had a bunch of scrap shit and I just cut it up into pieces and and welded and welded and welded. This is uh, 20, this might actually be 20 or 22 gauge uh, sheet metal and then, you know, ground it down after and saw all the stuff. Um, you know, just practiced and, you know, I get into it. It's fun. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but, uh, you know, I stayed at a holiday and I just got a couple books. Um, Welding Tips and Tricks is a great channel um, on YouTube. Uh, there's a couple, I think UC Davis put out a couple welding classes on YouTube. Um, uh, and there's all, there's all kinds of stuff, you know. There's a couple videos from some guy in Australia who shows you how to set up your big welder if you've never done it. And, uh... You, know, you just fart around and fart around and it stops being, uh, you know, less imposing. And that's about it. So, anyway, Keith and I guess whoever else watches this, uh, I think that's just about all the equipment welding specific that I have that, that you might want to think about it. And I'd written you that email on it. So, anyway, I hope you Find it useful.